Hey, what's going on? It's Doug Cunnington here, and it's my pleasure to introduce this uh, interview that I did with Matthew Woodward. So this is super cool for me. It was a great honor to talk to Matthew because when I first got started online in 2013, well, I didn't know anything. I was pretty green coming in. I listened to all the Smart Passive Income podcasts and all these different jumping off points. And I was looking for tutorials and trying to figure out how to do link building and use different tools and so on. And Matthew had launched a site right around that time, at least this inter internet marketing site that he still runs today. And um, he does tutorials, he had videos and super helpful stuff. Um, so it was super cool to actually interview him, talk to him you know, face to face via Skype. We talk about his start in SEO. We talk about white hat versus black hat versus gray hat and what he thinks about it. We also talk about getting a uh, sort of a quick start and launching a site on an expired domain plus a ton of other things. So this is a pretty casual conversation. Um, I think I may be able to have Matthew on again in the future. I really enjoyed talking to him. So if you have any questions for him at all, please leave a comment, all right? Leave a comment in the description. I'm sure Matthew's gonna hop on and, and try and answer some of those questions. And if he doesn't get to them, well, we can have a round two and maybe uh, bring him back on the show. So thanks a lot to Matthew. Be sure to check out his stuff over on his site. Links are in the description. So he also has a YouTube channel. I don't wanna forget that. Um, lots of great tutorials out there. So thanks to Matthew and let's get to the interview. Hey, what's going on? It's Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project and The Doug Show, and I am thrilled to have Matthew Woodward joining me today. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, early start for me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, thanks for getting up. It's always a challenge with the schedule, and I want to thank you for all the tutorials that you put out over the years. Um, we were just chatting beforehand, and I, and I was like, I read most of the reviews and tutorials that you had as I was getting started. Um, so thanks a lot for that. I know tons of other people have probably mentioned the same thing to you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's a two way street. And obviously, and for many people listening as well, I've, I've probably read your stuff, that stuff. I've got, I've got my finger on the pool. So we're all feeding each other, you know. So thanks for your contributions equally. Appreciate that. And for the people that don't know you, what do you do? Matthew and and what what was your background? Um, well, I do a lot of things right now. I'm most famously known for my SEO blog, MatthewWoodward.co.uk. Um, started about twenty years ago. I was delivering newspapers and to pay for a server. I was into competitive gaming and built my first website before YouTube existed. Um, and I didn't have the vision to build YouTube at that time because the website was built for us to share videos, <laughs> but videos of competitive gaming, not anything like YouTube did. Um, so from there, uh, I, I've always had a natural interest in sales, marketing, website. My, my, my dad is a very successful salesperson in his own right. Um, so I've just been applying a lot of those business, those offline tips online throughout my journey. Um, I did the whole corporate world, had great success with e-commerce there. I'm heavily rooted in e-commerce. Not many people know that. Um, and it's just grown from there. Corporate world sucks. I was told I was too passionate for the corporate world. That meant that I was too, I like to say, honest with people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, read between the lines. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that eventually led me to building affiliate sites and my own affiliate empire. And, uh, you know, I built my first real serious affiliate site. And I say serious affiliate site when it's making enough money to replace your full time income. And that was in 2005. Okay. Um, that's awesome. Actually, if you go to yeah, if you go to the about page on my blog, and even you might know, not know this, you can have a look. I, I share the site there and and some of the stuff I was doing in two thousand and five. Um, quite interesting to to see the 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 the, the, the progress you know across fifteen years. Um, so yeah, I've had a long journey. I've seen it all. I've seen it from before MySpace existed until when it died. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, 
I've been building websites since before Google existed. Um, yeah, along the way, I've seen it all. Um, Very cool. Yeah, it's been an interesting journey. <laughs> and I do, in doing research for this interview, I was checking out your about page and people should check that out. That's a very, um, it's a great about page. It sounds like you're just telling me the story. And the one thing I didn't realize was how long you've been in the game. So your corporate experience actually puts you right in the middle of some of the, you know, big growth uh, with the oh, internet yeah. and e-commerce. And yeah, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, when I joined the corporate world, they didn't believe in the internet as a sales channel. And a lot of the decision makers didn't understand the internet, they didn't believe in it, this, that, and the other. So it, it was always a, a fight to, to get anything done. For example, integrating a, a listen, email opt-in, right? Simple things in, in my spare time, 15 minutes done, you know? In the corporate world, that's like 12 meetings, six of which are, are, are in London, which means three members of the team have to get a train to London, an hour and a half. Then you have the hour meeting, then an hour and a half back. And each time you do that, that's cost like £700, $1,000. And, you know, we did that six times. And, you know, after a year of, of all of that, we deployed a newsletter. I'm like, look, I'm looking at our competitors and like, You've got not even even five percent of the resources that we have, and they were just storming us. So we were always having that internal fight, and despite all that, I found great great success, great success for for many brands, and uh, not just with SEO. I'm well versed in AdWords, PPC. We were doing some deals specifically to to go viral on on a specific site that sent our sales wild. We we were using lots of different, a complete digital marketing strategy, but we always had the handcuffs on us of the corporate world. So quite often when people see big corporate companies in search results, they're like, whoa, scary, can't compete with that. That's not true. You you, you can compete with that because the corporate world is so slow and rigid and the internet so fast and dynamic you have a significant advantage even if you don't believe you have the resource to do so. So, you know, that that was a very frustrating part of the job. It's like you hired me to grow online sales, but you, you're not taking it seriously. Like, like it's you, so much red tape, you know. It even got to the point where we had virtual warehousing, right? Like the stock is all physically sat on the same shelf in the same warehouse, but the computer system divides the stock and says, this sales team owns that stock, the web team owns that stock. Well, I sold all of the stock. But because of this stupid system, I couldn't ship it because it belonged to the sales team who hadn't sold it. So to release every single unit of stock, you had to print off a form, the reason why, run around like three floors of the building, get signatures of three different people, enter, like, yeah, people paid for next day delivery, you know, like, like, what, like I sold it, just get it out the door, what was all this bullshit in the middle, you know? So that's corporate SEO, corporate digital marketing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It's funny, um, um, do, do you yeah. watch the... US version of The Office. Have you seen that? No, no okay. I, I, I don't watch much TV. And if I do, I don't remember any because I'm usually thinking about something else. <laughs> That's why you're so productive. I, I was going to say there's an episode. I, I'm a huge fan of uh, actually both the original and the US version of The Office. Um, but yeah, there's an episode basically with what you described where like the, yeah. the computer system, the automated internet like sold everything but uh -huh. the salespeople in the office are trying to continue to sell sell so, yeah anyway yeah. <laughs> small digression now this is sort of counterintuitive but do you have some skills um, that you picked up from the corporate world that are serving you well now in hindsight you know i'm sure it was frustrating at the time but i know for me i did about 10 years in corporate <laughs> it <laughs> and like some of the rigidity um, is helpful uh, or management and understanding the structure. So did you pick up any skills I at that gig? There are things that I learned there that I couldn't have learned anywhere else. Um, you know, we had million pound AdWords budgets to play with. Um, I couldn't have learned that on my own. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's always better to learn on other people's money, right? Um, 
so that kind of and, and, and just the exposure to to to, to structure organization process management that they're lessons that I, I i think that a lot of people miss in the seo world um it gives you a certain level of business acumen um and you need that to succeed um so while my corporate experience was <laughs> very stressful to say the least and i mean like i nearly killed myself working there you know uh i wouldn't go i wouldn't go back and change it if if you know mm-hmm. uh, do you want it would i go through it again no but if i if i needed to go through it for the first time again yeah i'd do it for the first time again <laughs> Right. Yeah. Actually, you put that perfectly. I I wouldn't go back from where I'm sitting huh. now um, unless I really had to, you know, some bad stuff happened. But <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, going through it the first time, it's like, like you said, there's lessons that you can learn. There are huh? there are pe- actually the other thing is like you see people that are ahead of you and you're like, do I want to be there in 15 mm-hmm. years? And usually yeah. it's no, especially when you when you like really distill it down. On, yeah how happy yeah. they are so. yeah and it's funny that you know I, there was one meeting i remember and and the, I, I can't remember what, what we were meeting about but they were rah, 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 about something i'm sat there thinking my affiliate site makes more money than you do in a year <laughs> Why am I sitting and listening to you? <laughs> Why am I yeah. sat listening to you? So, um, yeah, yeah. And, and ultimately, everyone above is just corporate bodies stressed out, running around like crazy and essentially doing things that they hate doing. So, um, yeah, it's something I've observed in general in the world. The amount of money earned doesn't correlate with happiness. In fact, I've met a ton of miserable rich people but tons of happy people that are struggling, you know, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So it sounds like you were, uh, you know, still working the corporate gig and you were dipping your toes in some affiliate marketing. So how did you make that transition? Well, I'd been building my affiliate business part time in, in my spare time. Um, was nothing easy you know like you get home from work at, at 6 p.m you get something to eat quick 6 30 you grind through to 2 a.m and phew, you just just make it happen you know um so take for me to take the transition from the corporate world to full-time for myself was very easy because i'd established income streams income streams that were larger than my corporate salary so for me the transition was was, was pretty straightforward um it, it, it wasn't easy, but it did reduce any risk. And uh, as also as I left the corporate world, I was constantly getting headhunted. So I knew that even if it all didn't work out, I could just pick up one or two phone calls and I have a job immediately. Um, so that, that that that's how I did it. Just 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 one day I was like, you know what, enough's enough. I'm out. Cool. And I was out. And for the people, uh, my journey was uh, kind of similar to that as well, although I, I didn't have as much experience or uh, maybe as much success on the side stuff, but I got laid off. So I, at that point, I, I had to <laughs> yeah. make it work. Yeah, um, that's a good position to be in. And, and to that point, yeah, I mean, it was scary, but like, you know, some people are like, I want to quit and I, I don't have anything going and I'm going to, you know, figure it out along the way. Um, do you, what's your view on that? Uh, I mean, like, if you want it, you want it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, you, you either want it or you don't. Like, take it. It's a decision. Um, you know, and uh, there's no substitute for hard work and grind. Like, there just isn't. Yeah. There just isn't. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Just, 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 just bite down on the mouthpiece, step forward, and roll with the punches. That's all you can do go and go yeah. for it um yeah and it sounds like uh maybe similar to me you're a little risk averse so you waited until um you had enough revenue you felt confident and you were like okay we we can do this and it's not gonna destroy me i can get another job if i need to so, so you just you gosh. waited yeah. yeah yeah and you cool. know uh seo is risk management and that's all it is um so that's you know you got you everyone everyone what what was right for me might not be right for someone else you know, someone else might have a glowing opportunity that they might miss if they don't jump now. Um, 
yeah, and, and so there wasn't really a, a, a right way to to jump, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but there is no substitute for for hard work to to to, to do that. <laughs> that 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 applies to everyone. <laughs> yeah. And you know, across the board, and you know, launching into sort of another segment is when you launched your blog, I think in 2012. Um, filled with, I loved it because it had so many like actionable tutorials. Um, it wasn't, you know, too long, you know, sometimes it just drones on for forever and you just get to the point. So you write concise, there's great tutorials and you were also like demonstrating on how to use like tools and stuff. So I guess when did you decide like, Hey, like it, it's actually more valuable for me to start sharing some of the knowledge I've accumulated over whatever a, a decade or something like that. Um, and then launch the blog. It looks like it was overnight, but you obviously did a lot of hard work. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a combination of factors. Um, at the time, Matt Cutts kept banging on about forget link building, quality content, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, okay. You know, and we got to, you got to consider 2012 was a different time in SEO. You know, we could just throw up 300 words, three three percent keyword density, buy some links from Build My Ranks or something, and boom, boom, done. That's it. It, it wasn't, you know. So um, I was I I was always listening to Google, but always doing the opposite of what they said. So I was like, well, maybe I'll listen to them for once. Let's see what happens. At the same time, I was seeing there wasn't very many. In fact, there wasn't any SEO blogs that provided tutorials. You had like Search Engine Journal, which provides more information, not really tutorials. But, you know, Brian Dean hadn't launched then. Um, you know, the authority hacker guy, you weren't around. Like, th th there wasn't really anything. Um, and I, like, I was quite active in forums and I was sick and tired of just seeing just bullshit advice that was just wrong, you know, just wrong so i figured well why don't i just record what i'm doing and if i record what i'm doing I, I i you know i've seen all these questions on forums and this and that and the other i'm like well yeah i'm, I'm doing that every day i'm just going to record it and then i'm going to engage the people with the answer um and then answer any questions they've got and that was it that's what i did um the, 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 that that was the the birth of the blog you know, and it, it made like $4,000 profit in its second month. Wow. Amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. But all of that was essentially rooted in connecting people's problems to a solution. And that was it. Yeah. It sounds like you work for Google, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like, and you know, Matt Cutts actually emailed me and said, yeah, you know, not a big fan of like content spinning tutorial you've got, but I appreciate it when someone goes right down the middle and uh, you've done that with that. So yep. that was a good, good, good validation. Um, yeah. yeah. From, from Google. So they're certainly aware. <laughs> right. That's, uh, yeah. that's pretty cool. And I think um, I was going to say a lot of the tutorials, cause you and I were both uh, gray hat back in the day. Actually, I don't know what you're practicing right now. Um, which we can well, get into. That's a good question. Ask me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, our white hat, gray hat, what's going on with you today? Um, I think that anyone that identifies as a black hat SEO is an idiot. Anyone that identifies as a white hat SEO is an idiot. And anyone that identifies as a gray hat SEO is two types of idiot put together. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say that is not to like dig at people, but it, 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 for me, this is just an example of human stupidity at its finest, right? Google is a computer algorithm. It has no morals. It has no ethics. It's looking to be fed certain metrics. And off the back of those metrics, outcomes rankings, right? So what has black hat, white hat, gray hat, or any hat got to do with any of that? That is just humans needing to stamp their morality and humanness on something is not human. It's a computer. It's an algorithm. And somehow we've wrapped that, our human humanity around that and come up with these stupid labels, right? Like it's reverse racism, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. And, 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 and the problem it creates is that if you're inherently white hat and you identify as white hat, 
you 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 become ignorant of anything that's black hat or gray hat you take a kind of like a, a moral high ground which means that you only learn half of the game because you've become ignorant of the other half equally if you're a black hat you're like you think you're smart you think you're sneaky you think you get yeah like, ah, yeah stupid white hats you know you become ignorant of anything that's white hat so all labeling yourself as black hat white hat or gray hat does is stop you from understanding the complete game and when i hear people identify as that i'm like huh well yeah you know (laughs) so that's why i don't believe in the labels or the hats or or anything there's an algorithm it wants certain metrics give it the metrics well that's it (laughs) it's not not more complicated than that yeah and i think uh, i like that answer because i i mean i identify as a white hat but i it's just a Uh simplification right so and then what you the point you just made is like we're going a little deeper I know what you're talking about because, right, let's say I go out and um, we outsource, not outsource, but we reach out to a few uh, to a few blogs. We're like, hey, can we do a guest post? It's actually relevant and all that. But my, if my intention, right, if my intention is to get a link, then technically that's not right. Why? Well, no, it's um, black. But, but I mean, like, that's generally OK. I mean, that's kind of what we should be doing like if, if i was like hey matt can i do a guest post or well, vice well, versa well that is by traditional labels black hat uh, exactly so but it's the number one white hat link building strategy like it's stupid like the whole yeah. thing's stupid all these people yeah. selling white hat link building services what there's not a white hat link building service it doesn't exist like if you, once just, you pay it's for it's a it, label yeah. of convenience it, it, yeah. it's become a label of like like knighthood, you know, look at me, I'm just squeaky, shiny, clean. No, it's, for me, it's like, you're an idiot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Um, so, okay, I'll ask a, a, a specific question. So back in the day, there were some of those um, like software that could potentially, you know, build, let's say web 2.0 type, yeah. you know, free blogs. Yeah, SCNU, GSA, tons of them, yeah. Yeah, so like- Wheel um, Bandit was a great one. I take it- um, do you think those are still effective at this point in time or is it like their time has passed? No, SE Nuke, no. Like Link Wheel Bandit, those kind of things, no. GSA Search Engine Ranker has its place. The problem is GSA is too powerful and people just go at it. But you can tune it for quality and relevancy and not volume. And it's, well, it's, a, it's probably a tutorial I, I, I should sure. put out. Yeah. Um, but people like don't use it like that. They're still using it like the old way, you know. Yeah. Um, maybe that's partly my fault because I haven't put up <laughs> a developed <laughs> tutorial. Um, but like, okay, so one, we're going to do the podcast, and at the end of the podcast, I'm going to ask you for the main link, but then also over the all the links that it syndicates to, and those syndications, I'm going to build links to with GSA, to you know, give them a bit of, bit of oomph. So, um, gotcha. And, yeah. and I think, I mean, you highlighted it well, I mean, we're, we're going pretty deep. Uh, a lot of people do like these, uh, more technical kind of topics, but it's like, um, there are tools that are, you know, you use them improperly can really like damage what you're trying <laughs> to do. Yeah. But if, you, if you're restrained, like maybe there's some value in it. Um, I've long since, I, I don't use any of that. I don't know how to use those tools anymore, but there was one point in time um, that, that I did. And yeah, like for certain things back in the 2013 like period, it was great. You could rank much faster than you could now. So yeah, yeah. And, and uh, well, much faster than you can now. I don't know about that. Um, but you know, any tool is like a, a hammer and a chisel, right? If you give me a hammer and chisel and a block of concrete at the end, there's going to be like a lot of just rubble on the floor, <laughs> <laughs> but you give someone else a hammer and chisel and they're going to carve a beautiful statue, right? They've got the same tools, the same, the same, everything. It's just, they've just used them differently. And it's the same thing, uh, applies in terms of ranking quickly, um, for competitive keywords. Yeah. It's more difficult, but. For like low volume, even medium competitive, and certainly featured snippets, I mean, you can buy a domain, throw the content up, and grab your first ranking within four weeks. Um, yep. So yep. I, 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 the 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 more difficult keywords, yeah, it takes more time. 
but um, in general, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not seeing a, a much difference in speed of ranking as, as back then and and now. Um, I also build out any new sites on expired domains. I don't think there's a reason to be building a new site on a new domain in 2019 and, uh, unless it's a branding move. Um, so that gives you a huge head start uh, yeah. in the search results as well. Do you have any uh, like tips for people to find expired domains? Um, well, it's a minefield. Uh, I find myself in Spamzilla quite a lot. Um, they have lots of filters, lots of things. They have their own uh, spam detection algorithm and their own score that that, that tells you how clean a domain is. Um, and Domain Hunter Gatherer, that's a great tool. Um, if you were like, hey, I want I want a domain that's got links from New York Times, um, you just tell it that, and it will go out and crawl the New York Times website. It will find any domains that are linked to, and then it will check if they're expired or not, and then return a list of expired domains that are free to register with links from New York Times. Um, both of those are great tools. They both they both solve the problem in different ways, and they both do it in really, really, really good ways. Now you should do manual checks when you when you buy an expired domains, and for the most part, all I'm looking for is that the anchor text profile is branded and not heavily spammed with with exact keyword anchor text and beyond that uh, I'm, I'm not too worried if, if it's been used is it like as a japanese website before or, or anything like that um as long as that anchor text profile is clean that's you're going to dodge 90 percent of, of the bullets um looking at that um so yeah, that's the, they're the best way to buy expired domains. And um, sometimes, if you're new and, and you're buying an expired domain, you might look at a, a price at an auction and it's like two or three hundred dollars, and you might be like, "Whoa, no, sod that! I'm just going to buy a new domain." Um, what I encourage you to do is look at the backlink profile and put a dollar value on each of the backlinks. So a solid backlink from a reputable source, in or outside of your niche, is going to cost anywhere between two and four hundred dollars. You know, if it's from like New York Times or any big, 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 even more than that. Right. So it's you should always value a domain based on its link profile and how much would it cost you to acquire that link profile? And then you very quickly understand, wow, this is a bargain. I'll, I'll take 10. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. awesome. So that, that's the way to go about it. Very good. And I think, um, you know, I get that question fairly often, like, hey, can I build on an expired domain? And usually it's like if the person's asking the question, then they don't have the skills to make sure they're not getting a yeah. spammy yeah. website. Well, you know? Yeah, Sp Spamzilla will help that person cool. out uh, a lot. Yeah. So you do a lot of tutorials on tools, and I'm not going to make you pick any favorite. Um, I'll point people towards uh, the dozens of tutorials you have on various <laughs> tools. But we were just chatting beforehand about uh, Surf SEO, which I haven't used before, and you have a pretty cool like case study that uh, we could point people towards, but can you kind of break it down? Like what what happened here? Yeah, so Surfer SEO is a, well, not new, they've been around for about a year now, but they're gaining in more popularity. And basically what they do is you enter your target keyword, they analyze all the search results, they compare it against your page and say, this is what you should do in order to increase your rankings. And I've had great success with it in many different ways. And one of the things I shared recently, which is really interesting and contradictory to most typical SEO advice. And if, if you're into long form content or 10 times in your content or, or any of that, pay attention. Surfer SEO for my SEMrush review told me that I had 37,000 words, which I did um, split between the content and like 900 comments. It was 37,000 words. And it was telling me to delete uh, 33,000 words from the body. So it wanted me to reduce my word count from 37,000 to close to 4,000, which is weird, right? <laughs> so my SEMrush review, all it does is it lists 68 ways to use SEMrush. So I just went machete with it and reduced that to 19. That wasn't enough because of the 900 comments. So I just deleted all of the 900 comments. Um, 
none of which is good practical advice. <laughs> but Surfer SEO told me that I needed to reduce a word count and I blindly trusted it. After doing all of that, and I submitted it to Google Search Console, did the indexing, within 24 hours it went to number one. Where was it before? Uh, in the UK, number four, and in the US, number eight. Okay. That's pretty amazing. And within 24 hours, so the on hours. Yeah, changing on page is so fast. So, like, how, how did you determine and prioritize what you were going to remove? I didn't. <laughs> oh, you just, you were like, hey, I got to do this fast. Delete, 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 delete. Word count, no, delete, delete, delete. Yeah. Yeah. It was an experiment, you know. Sure. I, I didn't know which way it was going to go. Um, but, you know, apparently Google counts updated content as content that's been macheted, you know. Um, so that, that, that is in, in, there's, there's a video of, of it. I, I, I show you exactly what I did and why I did it. And I show you the Surfer SEO reports and the ranking. And I, I made a video of the whole thing. So you can you can go and check that out. Um, but yeah, the, the, the results are like rapid. <laughs> you know, and that's a commercial keyword. That's a money keyword. That That's, a, you know, a bottom line change in ranking. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. it's uh yeah it's so interesting like we've gone so far with like the long form content because I have some that were whatever you know fifteen yeah, yeah. twenty thousand well, words and then um I I didn't use a tool like that but in one case I like reduced it down split it up into other content made it more uh, consumable yeah. and like the rankings went up front on all of them not not exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do the same thing on my e-commerce SEO post right now it's like fifteen thousand words. Instead, I'm going to move it so it's e-commerce SEO is the main page, and then e-commerce keyword research, e-commerce link building, e-commerce what you know different categories. So then, the e-commerce SEO will become the main page, linking to the sub ones, and that's to measure the impact of that. Um, you know, Google's looking more for s specifics and relevancy, and long form content, ten times in your content, skyscraper in your content. All of that goes against the grain of what Google's looking for right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a pivotal change. When, when do you think that came about? Um, I think it's come about in the last year. Um, the medic update, um, I saw the medic update as a way for Google to get more specific results for voice search. Um, and in order to do that, they need to return not ultimate guides, but specific answers to specific queries. Okay. So um, there are places where big long form content does have its place, but I, I think it's being used in, in the wrong way right now. Um, and I encourage anyone who's ranking on the first page of Google right now and you have produced long form content 10 times got skyscraper content or anything like that, go plug it into the Surfer SEO trial and see if they recommend reducing word count. And if they do, just give it a try. If it doesn't work out, you can just paste the words back in and update it, right? Just take a backup. Um, but the, I mean, that's a revenue bottom line, you know, like it's, it's a, it's a yeah. only keyword, you know? Um, and, you know, we've seen Google react to uh, things like FAQ rich snippets really well. You know, you can add FAQ rich snippets to your page, submit it into Google index and almost instantly, and I'm talking like many people are seeing results within 20 or 30 seconds. They instantly get the FAQ rich snippet. In some cases, it also moves them up the rankings. And in some cases, it allows them to win the featured snippet. It's a change that takes, what, three to five minutes of writing, mm -hmm. submit it to Google, and the change is live almost instantly. Um, so we're seeing some very interesting stuff this year. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and, and, and Google's reliance on FAQ rich snippets. Somewhere in around March or April, I tested them last year when they first announced and they weren't, it was like, meh, not worth the effort. Um, then I retested them. I'm like, bang, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. they, they seem to have turned the volume up on that. And again, I think that's in line with their effort to, to win the voice search market. Um, Yep. So yeah, interesting changes. Yeah, be be more specific. That's 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 awesome. the direction that that seems to be going right now. And I 
with the FAQs and stuff like that, I, luckily I have videos um, from a year back or more where I was like, hey, it's a great way to add content. You can like just go to forums, like pick questions, go to answer the public, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, like start putting those in and now it's an integral don't part. don't forget to add the FAQ structured data. That's the important part because then it all pops up in the... Uh and the search results as well and that's, um, if uh, anyone needs help doing that there's a tool on my site mm -hmm. you literally just put the the question and the answer in press a button and it generates all the code great uh, to do that yeah. cool i will point people towards that um and i want to get into your speaking a little bit so i don't know when you started speaking but is that a still a big part do you still speak very much or was it a, a period of time how was it like 2013 um Speaking's been an interesting adventure. Um, no two conferences are the same. Um, we've done things like, um, wow, really, <laughs> really crazy stuff. Like uh, we had a private party in Caesar's Palace um, with Wu-Tang Clan. We've had Snoop Dogg DJ parties. We've done like really like weird, like mind blowing. Uh, like there's all these like weird events that go on around a conference that, uh, that have been we've had iron chefs cook for us we've had uh i've eaten like 500 dollar steaks because I, all the companies invite you and you know want to smooth you and stuff so that side of the conferences are really good because you get to do things that you just like you just couldn't do you know um yeah. normally um speaking i actually don't enjoy speaking that much it's very one way from a stage. It's very like, you're just going to sit there, shut up and listen to me, right? And that's not how I built the blog. You know, I built the blog as a two-way conversation, answering people's questions and, and trying to elevate people. And it's very hard in a conference to elevate an entire audience, you know, because everyone's facing different problems. Everyone's sites are in different positions. Like, so I, I, I don't really enjoy giving the talks um i'd much rather be sat there on the computer on the front and just have one person come to me one after another you know 10 minute consultation i'd much rather sit there and do that for eight hours and give a 30 minute presentation um but that's not how conferences work <laughs> and i've asked so many conference organizers can i do that and they're like no just go on the stage so <laughs> just talk let's keep it normal yeah yeah let's go um so yeah yeah i'll be at chiang mai seo um, I think that's in like two weeks. I've not even started a presentation yet. <laughs> Actually, if you record, if you listen to this right now, it's going to have already happened. <laughs> that's right. That's so hopefully right. I nailed the presentation. Uh... <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. You, how, how many times uh, have you have you done um, speaking? Like at I, conferences? I'm more. I've probably forgotten more than I can remember. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um, and I think every good SEO has a uh, a war story, some sort of penalty. Do you have any uh, really epic penalty situation that you you can share with us? Yeah, I mean, who who dodged Penguin 1.0, right? No one dodged that bullet. Like, I had a few survivors, um, but a lot of it, yeah, it was heavy hitting, man. That 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 was a, a pivotal change in the SEO industry, and. Um, yeah, I mean that that may literally may make or break a lot of people. Yeah. Um, way way back way back when, um, and arguably, if you're not getting penalised, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> like, like if you're not getting like if there's you know when there's a big core update or anything like that, if at least one of your sites in your fleet doesn't get hit, you're not trying hard enough. Like, and there's so much value in having a site that got hit. Because then you're like, right, why did it get hit? And you can look at things in ways that you can't look at with other sites that get hit. You know, you can find sites that got hit, but you can't see what was going on behind the scenes. You don't know what changes were made and when. And, you know, you haven't got your finger on the pulse in the same way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, 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 nearly every update I have some losers and some winners. And then you can play with that. You got you, you to... I, th I like that. I think you to to bring together some of the points that you you mentioned earlier with like white hat and gray hat, um, and the fact if some if someone doesn't study the other side, they're missing the full picture sometimes. Yeah. 
um, which in, I have a course and in my course, I have like PBN and gray hat section, which I tell people don't do it. You know, don't, don't do it. However, it's pretty valuable for you to understand. Cause you may be able to, you know, pick mm -hmm. a little sliver of a, a strategy and use it in a different way that no one else thought of before. Um, and yeah, like you said, it, it, it goes both ways. Um, so yeah, perfectly said. And I think that, um, I, I don't know, I don't know if I want to have like a site hit every time, but yeah, if you're not kind of on the edge of like trying some interesting things, yeah, I mean, then, like, yeah, yeah, like no one wants to see an income that they rely on get wiped out overnight. Sure. But I'm, a, I'm at the stage where I've got so many sites and so much inventory and, it, it, it's just a numbers game at the end. Like I said, I said earlier, SEO is just a game of risk management. That's it. And one of the ways that you can manage that risk is to diversify, diversify your site profile, different niches, different site setups, different approaches to link building. And then, then you know, some of them you can go all out PBN, some just go outreach. So like you can keep mm -hmm. a nice balance, you know, right. and then it's surprising what gets hit and what doesn't. You're like, what the fuck? This piece of shit, like generated site, like spun crap, like went up and this went down. Like, <laughs> like uh, uh, it's stupid, right? So, um, yeah, there's value in, 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 in having enough sites that it doesn't become a big risk to your business that, uh, that an update hurts you. Right. Um, if you're just starting out, that that is a big risk. It is something you need to face. It is something you need to deal with. It is possible one day you're going to wake up and your income be gone. Um, but that is a risk of the business that you're aware of before it happens. Therefore, just plan for it. Plan for the worst. When the worst happens, well, you just go about your day like any other day. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So uh, we're coming up towards the end of time. So we got just a few more questions. Now, in the last, I don't know, like year and a half or so, the medic type updates have been coming down the pipe here. And basically it's hard to tell from where i sit like what's going on what changes to make um it seems to be more of a holistic just everything that you're that's going on yeah. with your uh -huh. site uh -huh. and off uh -huh. your site uh -huh. um so do you have any observations from all I, the sites I do you have, have observations i have specific strategies and learnings but i'm not ready to put those out in the wild um, right. because they're giving me significant advantage right now. However, I will sum it up that most people that are building affiliate websites are building affiliate websites. They act like affiliates and that's it. What you really should be doing is building a business and doing all the things that a business does. That's the difference. Okay. And that's a shift in mindset. And that's a shift in how you approach many different things. Um, yeah, don't don't act like an affiliate. Don't build affiliate sites, build businesses. And uh, if you think about that over, over a coffee for 30 minutes, you'll probably have a list of actions. <laughs> Very good. And yeah. um, so at some point you will like put out into the wild some of the findings sometime in the future maybe maybe not maybe. Maybe. <laughs> right. yeah. fair enough it, 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 it. the list of things i tested and experimented with and a list of things that i do came from that line of thought very good um that's cool i i one, think one, one, one clue every business mm -hmm. has a phone number very <laughs> pretty strong clue nice you know yeah that's, <laughs> and it's easy enough to get a, you know a, a phone number that you you know so people can figure that out yeah and there's lots of other things that businesses do that people building affiliate sites don't yeah totally so what are those things do them <laughs> all right and uh last question here so for people that are just getting started maybe they're they're making a few bucks or maybe they haven't even launched their site yet what advice do you have for them um so i've seen a lot of people's sites over the years lots of people that email me in comments and can you look at this can you look at that can you look at that 99.5 percent of the sites that i look at the content is awful 
the design is awful, the layout's awful. Just the first impression when you touch the site is bad. It doesn't feel like it just doesn't feel like a good experience. And the way I like to look at it is if you were opening a business in the high street, like in 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 in, in a, like a store, a retail store, when you opened that business, you'd have everything organized neatly, everything would be lit nicely, you'd have a nice sign outside, all the trolleys would be organized nice, the the the, the carts, you know, um, all the products would be in categorized, like all the bread would be with the bread, you know, you wouldn't have like milk and like ice cream together you know um everything's categorized and where it should be and everything's presented nice it's clean and and people just don't launch their affiliate websites in that same way they just don't and so if you're just starting out it's very hard when when you're online to to stay connected to the real world sometimes to stay rooted and most of my success has come from just applying sales and marketing lessons that we've had for a a century but just applying them online you know doing the very basics right and the very basics right are you got to build a website that humans love before google can love it and many people don't do that so i encourage you to think of your website like an offline retail brick and mortar business and then think, well, what experience do people have when they walk through my door? When you look at things like that, it 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 changes how you build the site. It changes the, you know, you want people to go a specific route around their aisles, right? You know, you don't want to start with a frozen food because by the time you get to the end, it'll be all mushy, you know? Um, you got to start with fruit and veg. And the, the, the same thing with when you're building your, your digital business, whether it's an affiliate site, whatever it is, you must think of it like a physical business. Because each time it's very easy to become disconnected. And I'm, I'm sure you may suffer from this. You know, I, I can look at something and be like, oh, there was 500 more visitors today. Whoop. You know, like, like, but how disconnected am i from the fact that 500 real people came to the site read the content digested it in their mind like it went in here it was processed and they formed an opinion if i was at a presentation i stood on stage and there was 500 people in front of me i'd feel that but in google analytics yeah 500 people like you know it's, it's easy to for, for, forget that so you've got to put that level of of thought into to what you're building your, if it's your first site, put that level of thought into it because I guarantee that 99% of your competition aren't <laughs> because I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's 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 the advice. Um, also, treat it like you're building a business. Like if there's a plugin you need that's going to help you solve a problem and it, it's going to take you 10 hours, you, you know, you, you're Googling how to do it for free or whatever, you spent 10 hours, just buy the plugin, man. Like, you just like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, the amount of time you'll save to then progress to other things. Like um, people are often like, how can we do this free? How can we do free? No, don't do it free. Do it right. You're building a business. Like, you know, if, if you're opening your store, you wouldn't go around and find all like the free shopping carts out of rivers and, you know, <laughs> and like, and then, you know, like, oh, we'll just use that. That'll do. You know, you wouldn't do that, would you? Like you want nice carts, shiny carts that people feel comfortable putting food. The, the same thing, you know? Um, so that's it. Just just build your site, build a business, understand that you're building a business, treat it like that. And remember, at the end of that computer screen is a human. Awesome. That's, a, that's the best advice I can give you. Where can people find you, Matthew? Uh, MatthewWoodward.co.uk is the SEO blog I'm most known for. Um, on there, you'll see my tutorials are split into different sections, SEO blogging and, well, I called it work. Um, but it's actually make money online. I just didn't want it to sound spammy. <laughs> like work suggests you got to work, right? Like yeah. you got to do something. Whereas make money online is like, yeah, do nothing, make a load of money. So I called it work. <laughs> Smart. And um, yeah, everyone check out the site. And by the way, if you want to see one of the tightest silo structures I've ever seen, um, go check out Matt's site. So yeah, it's really it's really good. Like you can just navigate your way to exactly what you want to see. So I'm glad you said that because I took a risk and changed the entire URL structure about three months ago because it wasn't like that before. Yeah, I was I actually was going to ask you off 
off the air, but since we're talking about it, yeah, I've been slowly trying to redo things as well. Um, can you share any results? Has it been good by reorganizing? It's been, I, I didn't even feel a change. It was like, it, I never did it. Huh. Didn't hurt anything, but it was just a pain redirecting everything. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a much better experience for the user right now because I built the home page, the SEO page, the blogging page and the work page. And they all, you know, blogs are, are selfish inherently. They're just a list of posts like, nah, 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 look, this is what I wrote. And that's just it, right? Like, a, like that's it. It doesn't really help connect people's problems to solutions. Um, so I built those pages and then once I built the pages, I was like, well, the URL structure sucks. Literally everything was just like in slash tutorials. I, I never planned for the blog to to, to take off it was an experiment I, uh, I just recorded some videos and put them up that was it yeah. um there was no thought in it um so it it came to the point where there needed to be some thought in it in order to connect people's problems to solutions as quick as possible that involved building those pages and changing the url structure um what it has made easier though is reporting on the back end um, I can quickly see, oh, the blogging section's improving, the SEO section's, blah, blah, blah. it's helped there. Um, I, I was hoping for something bigger results, but nothing came. <laughs> yeah. Do you, did you find any um, like more pages per visit or more time on site where someone's like navigating? The no not not from the uh, URL structure change, but okay. from the fact that now you could literally just come and find a solution to your problem real quick that helped before you need to click through like nine pages of bloody posts or use a search box and anyone that's used a search box on the wordpress site knows it sucks <laughs> yeah yeah cool so um it it it, it in terms of, of of making the user happier it's way up there like it's way Got way it. up there yeah cool thanks for the digression and thanks for your time today i think this is uh going to really serve the audience well so i appreciate it matthew i hope so i hope so and um look anyone got any questions any problems anything you know um please reach out um either through the contact form on my blog or on a, on a comment on the articles I, I, most of what i've created was based on people saying hey i've got this problem what's the solution and oftentimes i can dig into my sites or my archives or whatever and find an example where we did this and these are the results and and and, and help guide you there so um please any any questions feel free to reach out and ask and uh who knows it might end up becoming uh, the next tutorial <laughs> cool all right well have a good one thank you thank you very much for having me on bye-bye Thanks again to Matthew. Like I said, go check out his stuff. Tons of awesome tutorials. And I'll, I'll mention it again here. If you want to check out a very well uh, siloed, a very intentional architecture for a website, check out a site, just browse around. And it takes a lot of planning. And I know he spent a lot of time uh, reorganizing the way his site was put together. But from a user standpoint, a visitor standpoint, it's very easy to navigate from uh, one topic to another in a relevant area and from you know just a learning standpoint it's uh it's really usable so do check that out and we'll catch you on the next episode